Hi folks, Martin here. Just kicking things off at the moment for uh, this little live stream of getting to know your wolf mix, your W1. Let's see how we're going. Okay, cool. Got some people checking in and on the chat as well already. Awesome. Hi Alistair, hope you're well. Okie dokie. Right. So, today, I'm going to cover uh, two main things. First is moving heads um, and barrel fixtures like uh, Warlocks, Wizards, that kind of thing. Um, I realise that I don't actually have either of my <laughs> Warlocks here at the moment, so I've got a couple of little fixtures that I'll show you in a second uh, that will do the job nicely and certainly demonstrate what I'm, uh, what I'm going to talk about. Um, the second thing I want to cover is Freedom Sticks. Uh, I've had a few people ask about multi-beam fixtures specifically, but most people were talking about Freedom Sticks um, and what you can uh, do with your W1 to with your Freedom Sticks. Um, I've used them a bit. Uh, today will be a bit of a voyage of discovery to find out uh, a bit more. I'll, I'll kind of use the the kind of my applied knowledge, and we'll we'll, we'll take a look at what you can do with the W1 um, and Freedom Sticks. Let's have a quick look. Um, at what I'm, what I've got here uh, set up. So first off, uh, I have got a uh, let's just point some pictures. Right, so I've got my W1 set up. Um, I've got it. I've got a, a a few fixtures set up. In fact, let me just show you what they look like. So here we go. So just over there, you can't you uh, you can see them actually. So on the floor, um, from left to right, I have got um, a little ADJ in a pocket spot. Uh, then I've got two um, Equinox Vortex moving heads, and then on the far right, um, over here somewhere, if you can find my finger, there we go. Over there is a uh, another ADJ Inno pocket spot. Um, these two guys here are uh, little um, ADJ mini deckers. They have got um, their RGBW fixtures, and they've also got um, a rotating mirror, uh, which, to all intents and purposes, is the kind of same as something way more expensive like a Warlock. Um, so uh, these don't have a, a con continuous rotating mirror, but, but I'll show you what I want to show you using these guys. Um, and then may maybe in a couple of weeks, one of my Warlocks uh, was giving me some grief. So um, it's currently with someone for repair and they've also borrowed my second one just uh, to just to do some diagnostics with the one that wasn't working. So, uh, so sadly, yeah, I don't have any Warlocks here, which is a bit annoying. But never mind, we can say we can use these mini deckers. Um, you'll also notice there's a row of freedom sticks there. Um, they're not on at the moment. Um, I'm going to switch uh, to a slightly different project um, and show you a little bit about how those guys work. Right. First things first. Hi, Gary. Just checking on the chat as well. So uh, let let me let, I want to talk about moving heads. Um, uh, talk about uh, limitations um, and how you can get your moving heads to do what you want them to do um, which in most cases is pointing forwards aiming somewhere kind of floor to ceiling on the dance floor and not behind you or behind your DJ booth um, and then we'll use those same limitations to, uh, to, to, to get some control over things like warlocks or in my case mini deckers. Okay let's have uh, let's have a quick look and see what to, we need to do. Right First off, I want to show, uh, talk about DMX um, and pan and tilt. Uh, so all of the move effects on your W1, um, all that does is generate movement using pan and tilt channels. Uh, if your fixtures don't have a pan and tilt channel, then move effects isn't going to work for you. Um, what you can do, however, is adapt some fixtures, uh, or in particular fixture profiles, um, so that they do use pan and tilt, and therefore they, the movement effects will have some uh, some effect on them. Uh, let's, let me let me just go. I, probably is a bit of a refresher more than anything else. Uh, let's just talk about what what pan and tilt really means. So, right, I'm just going to stick something on the screen. So, um, here we go. Right, so. Um, all DMX channels, as I'm sure you know, uh, range from the value zero up to 255. Um, and there are generally two, sometimes pan and tilt has um, 
micro pan, micro tilt, but let's keep it nice and simple for the moment. Uh, so uh, a pan channel will be from zero to 255 and a tilt channel will be from zero to 255. So if um, uh, uh, if you've got the w, your W1 that's creating um, some movement, and if I, let's say I overlay something like uh, a circle on here. So, so if you were to overlay the simple circle uh, move effects pattern, what would happen is your W1 would cr would create all of the pan and tilt movements to create um, a circle. And I, I realise I'm pointing at the screen; you can't see that. Uh, to create a, to create a kind of a circular effect. Now, that all sounds pretty good, pretty simple, until you realise that your moving heads can can move uh, in. Uh, probably more than 360 degrees. Both of the both of the sets of moving heads I've got down here on the floor um, can can sp can pan way more than 360 degrees. Um, however, they can't tilt 360 degrees. Uh, most of the these guys here can actually only tilt about 180. So they can literally point all the way forward and they can flip over and point all the way backwards. Um, they certainly can't. Uh, I've got a couple of other moving heads that can do a bit more. They can do nearly 270 degrees, but but there, there's there's uh, uh, none of these guys quite obviously can can tilt more than uh, they certainly can't tilt 360 degrees. Um, there are the, so, some fixtures that can do that. Those are the kind of continuous rotation things. Um, they're more complicated. We will have a look at some of those um, possibly a bit today um, and possibly in another Facebook Live. So uh, in a nutshell, if you, um, uh, I'll tell you what, let me just go and I'm going to show you what, what happens uh, for limitations. Uh, so I'm going to overlay, uh, so if I want to, if you, if you set a limitation uh, on your pan and tilt channels so that it looks a bit like this, uh, what, 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 uh, what we're really saying here is that uh, rather than the, your fixture being able to move all the way from zero up to two five five. Um, in this case, we're just limiting it to a much smaller range, and that means that rather than being able to spin round five hundred and forty degrees, we ideally want to limit it to probably spin round no more than about one hundred and eighty. Um, and the same is true for tilt. This is just the example on the screen is literally that, just an example. Um, but uh, we'll see what it looks like in real life uh, in a moment. And so, uh, therefore, if you then apply a movement effect to a fixture that has uh, a limitation set, then essentially rather than the circle filling the whole of the grid, the, the, the circle movement will only happen within the limitation. So hence you'll end up with what appears to be a much smaller circle. But in reality, um, it, what it means is that your, the circle pattern that's drawn by your, your fixtures will be on the dance floor and not just spinning wildly. So, Let's go and see what that looks like if uh, we turn that into uh, some real world fixtures. So let's go back, stick some fixtures on the screen and see what it looks like. So I'm going to go into the fixture settings. Um, you'll notice at the moment that all of my fixtures are looking, uh, they're all behaving themselves. They're all pointing straight up. Uh, and uh, at some point I can guarantee they will, they will point directly at the camera and kind of blind you but uh, let's see um, let's see what happens so I'm going to go into um, I've also deliberately picked these these fixtures by the way because they're all awkward in some respect uh, uh, and you'll see why in a moment uh, none of these none of these fixtures particularly in this combination um, uh, appear to work together very well to start with it's only when you apply limitations to them um, that you actually get uh, you get them kind of back under control and they all do the right thing. So um, I've deliberately picked these because, as I say, they're a little bit awkward. So I'm going to select um, on my W1, that you're probably not going to be able to see it, but I'll tell you. So I've selected the two inno pocket spots and you'll notice that they've now gone white. And I'm going to select the limitations uh, button at the top. Um, and you'll see that I've already, oh blimey, I knew that was going to happen. They've kind of, they've now <laughs> washed the screen. Uh, let me go and see if I can turn those. Maybe can I turn those down. Might be able to turn the dimmers down on those. Actually, let's go for uh, maybe wash this. Turn the dimmers right down because they're just ridiculously bright at the moment. Hopefully they're not going to. Right, we'll try that again. Go into fixtures, select the two in those uh, pocket spots. Go into fixtures view. Right, that's a bit better. So if I if I set my minimum pan 
and maximum pan so that it's a, it's the, it full size minimum tilt is zero maximum tilt is zero you'll see that these guys they kind of look like they're doing the right thing what i'm going to do is put my finger on the little kind of pointer here um, and i'm just going to drag it around and you'll see what the, you'll notice first off you'll notice that they all move but secondly you'll notice if you look at the inner pocket spot on the left hand side for example you notice that if i drag it from right to left it's going to go around uh, that's a ho one whole turn and then about another 180 degrees as well so uh, so this thing can spin round almost one and a half times uh, you definitely don't want it to be doing that because that if it if it can spin round to point at you at any point um, uh, then it it will do so you so we, we apply limitations uh, purely to stop this but these particular fixtures from spinning round and pointing at you so uh, this is trial and error you need to you'll need to try it with each fixture um, they will not be the same um, but I, as I said earlier I deliberately select these these two different types of fixtures because they're different and you'll see you'll see why uh, in a moment so what I'm going to do is is uh, work out where I want to where I want this these uh, fixtures to pan from so if you watch the the pocket spot on the left of the screen I kind of want it to a pan from about this point here uh, to about this point there right that's as far as I really want it to go and you'll notice where my finger is on the screen that that really isn't that far okay so I want it to move from about here to here so I'm going to set the minimum pan uh, this uh, this point here so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn I'm gonna hold whilst holding my finger on the screen I'm gonna s I'm gonna bring this minimum pan and you'll notice this the left hand side moving now I want to bring it up to roughly where my finger is so it's probably gonna be about here somewhere I don't know I'm gonna guess about I'm gonna actually look at the things in real life and see where they are uh, so I probably want it to be about I can see it in real life um, I probably want it to be about there okay so that's as far left as I want this in a pocket spot on the left to move and you'll notice the one on the right is doing the same thing okay now I'm gonna drag my finger all the way to the right hand side okay making sure I'm, I'm what I'm doing I'm pulling this little marker with my finger so I'm gonna put so I want I want I want it to move uh, from from this position here to about this position there no further than that okay so I'm going to change the max pan get the right button here to be to pull it pull it in so you'll notice the right hand side is now kind of moving inwards and I want it to be uh, you can I'm just going to adjust it whilst looking at it in real life to see it for about here and here okay so now uh, my if I move this from left to right this fixture now this but this little white dot cannot Go out. Even though I'm pulling my finger over here, the dot, the little white target, cannot leave the red box. Okay. So if I drag it over to the left, my pocket spot is is uh, in the right place there. And if I drag it over to the right, it goes about as far as I want it to go. Um, so that's kind of that's the pan movement or left to right. I also need to fix tilt. So I, I definitely do not want it to go all the way across here because if my DJ booth is where my little sofa bed is, I do not want it to be pointing at me. But I do want it to be pointing at the floor, so that means the the um, the the minimum tilt is probably about right at zero, but the max tilt is too much. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I want it to be about here. So in reality, I probably want it to be about 50%, and I can you'll be able to see on the screen. I realise I've got fingers everywhere um, that it does say max tilt 100%, and if I pull this max tilt down to about 50%, it's going to be somewhere about right. So I want it to max tilt about 50%. Let's have a look. So now I've ended up with a with a much smaller limitations box. Okay, and my pocket spots uh, go as that's as far left as they'll go. That's as far right. Uh, that's as high as they'll point. They won't go any higher than that. So they won't flip over and point at my sofa, and they will go down to the floor. Brilliant. Pocket spots looking good. Okay, so I'm going to simply uh, exit the the fixture setup for pocket spots, and I'm going to do the same thing for the vortex so unselect the two inner pocket spots and then select vortex these guys are going to be a bit brighter okay so 
uh, limitations for these again currently this is this is the where the limitations are set I'm going to make it I'm going to just go and max these out again so that you can uh, you can see them um, at, right ooh, turn that right so I've got I've I've got minimum as zero hundred uh, one hundred percent max so again you'll notice that these guys here if you watch the vortex in the middle you'll see that these guys can spin uh, from this point here all the way around to this point here and now there's now the pocket spots are going to blind us um, and they can keep going and keep going and keep going so they can spin these these vortex in the middle can go way too far so what I need to do is apply the same kind of um, restrictions or the same limitations to these guys so I'm going to say I, I want this guy to, to point I, I really want them to do that kind of movement from about there to about there ish okay so same principles set my minimum pan up to up to this point here so if I look at them in real life I can see that's about as far as I want them to move this direction maximum pan is probably about where my finger is so I'm going to turn this encoder here drag the maximum pan right in so that they can't go any further than this it's looking pretty good in terms of so now you'll see they can literally uh, they can they can move from here to here My, the problem is that they can they can point to the floor but they can also flip right over the back so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do now is uh, set the minimum tilt uh, so that they can't flip over uh, minimum tilt crank this up increase this a bit it's probably gonna be somewhere in about the 50 percent ish again Something along those lines. There we go. So I'm going to end up with something, a, a box that looks, oh, blimey. Right, I'm going to hold this out of the way so you can see them. Um, so I, you, if you can see on the screen, I've got a much smaller limitation box. It's also in a very different place to the pocket spots. You remember the pocket spots is over here. That's fine, all right? That's not an issue. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. You set the limitations for, the, for, the, for each specific fixture. So I've got two pocket spots. So I'll set limitations for those, and I've got two... Uh, are these Equinox Vortex. I'm going to set different limitations for those. So if I kind of move this around now, you'll see it can go, it can point to, uh, over to the left, can point over to the right. Um, it can, and if I put it in the center, it can point all the way down to the floor and then up to the ceiling. It cannot, it can't flip behind me. So looking pretty good. I'm going to exit that, save it, save this. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to see what happens. So I'm going to deselect these two these two fixtures. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to without using any movement effects on the W1. I'm going to see uh, what happens if I try and choose a position for these guys. So I'm going to I'm going to see what happens if I tap floor for each one. And okay, and you think right, it's not kind of done what I was hoping because I've pointed, I've selected floor uh, for uh, group B, which is the uh, the moving spots, the inner pocket spots, and group C is these moving wash, these equinox vortex in the middle. Uh, but the vortex are kind of pointing to the ceiling, not to the floor. That's quite common. That's another reason why I selected these fixtures because they kind of work in the opposite way to the to the pocket spots. And there's a really quick and easy fix for this. So if you tap floor, and your and your fixtures are pointing to the ceiling, all you need to do is go back to the home, go into the fixtures, go to the 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 two fixtures that uh, that are kind of pointing in the wrong direction. Set limitations, and I'm just going to move this so you can see. Um, you'll notice uh, that there's an invert pan, an invert tilt button at the top. So if the pan is going the wrong way, i.e., they're literally pointing to the ceiling when they should be pointed to the floor, you just tap the invert pan button. Okay. Now, when I go home, uh, deselect these two, go back to my position. So if I'm point, if I tap, uh, I'm going to just switch back to Flauter. They sh these guys should be. Oh, did I select invert pan? I think I did. What a donut! Right, let's get it right. Limitations. Right, these. Let me just select the actual right fixes for a start. Uh, this is where I realized that I selected invert pan and I should have selected invert tilt because it's the tilt function that's wrong. 
and I still realize that you can't see anything because they just have to be pointing directly at the camera. Right, let's get it right. Invert tilt, okay? Because it was pointing to the, to the ceiling when it should have been pointing to the floor, you just tap this invert tilt button here. I'll try not to blind you too much with these guys. Uh, right, hit home. So now when I go to position, uh, if I select floor for each of these, they should now be pointing to the floor. So again, my top tip here is that um, you can do, so most fixtures themselves actually on the fixtures will allow you to invert the pan and tilt, but you don't need to do that on the fixtures because you can do it in the W1. So within limitations, you can flip the, uh, you can or invert both pan and tilt to correct those kind of problems. So now, even though I've got two very different types of fixtures here with very different movement and very different travel, um, by setting the limitations and in, in the vortex case, inverting the um, tilt, uh, I've now got all four of these fixtures to behave exactly the same. So that's pretty cool. Uh, how are we doing so far? It's looking pretty good. Okay, so that's that's how uh, that's how you should be setting limitations. You should be setting them for for each individual fixture type uh, because they're all different. Uh, I've seen people uh, ask me questions about why why do, why do some of their fixtures kind of point left when some of them uh, are pointing um, uh, dead ahead? It's because you just haven't got your limitation settings in quite the right place and you need to do that thing where you put your finger on the screen of the W1 and move it around inside the boundary box of your limitations to make sure that each of your fixtures is pointing in the right direction. It's only when you do that and you get them each of the boundary boxes for each fixture type in the right place um, that all of your all of your fixtures will then be pointing in the right direction. Okay so uh, so now that we've created some limitations uh, I'm just going to show you a, quick, a couple of movement effects. So last time I didn't have any um, fixtures set up, so I do today. Uh, so I'm going to go here. I'll turn the dimmer up on these guys slightly so you can see them. Um, these are flipping bright, these vortex. So uh, movement effects. If I go to move effects, um, I've, I've set this one to be uh, just use a circle. So that will that should describe the kind of the, a, a, a circular shape within the boundaries of that loop, that limitation. Um, speed is 50%, size 100%. What size 100% means, it will fill the boundary box. If you crank size down, it will not fill the boundary box. If you set size at 50%, it will make it half the size of your limitations boundary box, and therefore it will cover half the size of your dance floor. Um, I'll cover what uh, things like fade uh, is in a moment. So if I um, enable uh, this move, movement effects of both of these two guys uh, with with uh, speed at 50 phase is set to zero these guys should be doing pretty much exactly the same thing kind of looks like they are I feel like it's a small win so they're doing exactly the same thing uh, they're, they're describing a circle shape or at least they're kind of you know, a circular circular shape uh, within the entire boundary box. Uh, if I turn the size down, as I mentioned earlier, you're going to you're going to create a much smaller circular shape within within that within that boundary. So you can see they're not moving quite as much, but they're still producing a circle shape. Uh, several people have asked me if you can see on the screen what why are the, why are these four buttons here uh, lit, and what do the buttons around the outside do? Well. What these buttons do, so this movement effect, I've deliberately made it smaller, so it's not 100%, I've deliberately made this, this movement effect at 50%. Um, the four buttons in the middle represent the center of that boundary box. So I've got, I've got, an over, I've got a, 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 uh, um, a limitation, um, but the, this, the overall circular shape is, is in the center of that boundary box. If I, if I tap the, the buttons at the top, bearing in mind I've got two groups, so I'm gonna press both of these guys. Um, um, this, these guys, the fixtures are still drawing a circular shape, but they're now drawing the circular shape at the top of the boundary box, or in my case, near the ceiling. If I, if I hit it at the bottom, these, they're, they're still drawing a circular shape, but that's now at the 
bottom of the boundary box. Okay, so it's a 50% of the boundary box, but at the bottom. And no prizes for guessing. If you do it over to the left, um, the circular shape will be slightly over to the left somewhere. And if you hit the one on the, the, the two buttons on the right, it goes to the, to the right. And then uh, similarly again. So this is this is the uh, same 50% circular shape, but this time shifted towards the top left of the boundary. That all your limitations and top right, bottom left, um, and bottom right. So that's what these things, the, these buttons do. It's, it, it simply means that the circular shape at 50% size is uh, is is uh, at this at this position within the overall limitations, the overall boundary. Um, if you if you put it in the centre, if your f size is 100%, that means the circular the the, the circular um, pattern being drawn. Uh, will fill the boundary. So it actually won't make a blind bit of difference which one of these you select because it's already filling the entire box. This really only comes into its own when you reduce the size of the circle. So if I do a really small like 30% size, so these fixtures are really, the, the circular pattern is quite small, but I want it to be somewhere up on the ceiling, I can do that. So it's a, quite, it's a, it's a, it's a fairly small circular pattern, but I've got it pointing right at the ceiling, or I could have it pointing right down the floor. These guys, these fixtures aren't particularly good. No, they can't, uh, they don't have a great deal of um, tilt travel, so they can't really get down to the floor. But some fixtures can. Right. Okay. A um, couple of other things. Uh, so I'm just going to crank the size to 50%, put it in the middle. Uh, what do these other things do? Phase, you've probably seen this before. Uh, phase means that rather, uh, I've set these lights up so that they are uh, they're in sequence for, from left to right as you see them. Um, I think. Better check that. Um, if, I, if I adjust phase slightly, it means that rather than them being exactly in time, uh, if I turn it to something like 30%, it means that all of, these, all of these lights are describing the same circular pattern, but, but they're all at a slightly different p point in the circle that they're being drawn. And what that translates to is a nice consistent movement, but a little bit out of sync, as it were. As you can see, from left to right, by the time this the the, the pocket spot on the left has kind of got to the top, the guy, that, you know, the the vortex to, to the right of it is just catching up, and the one to the right of that is just catching up, and the little pocket spot on the far right is quite some way behind. If you crank phase up uh, uh, even more, it becomes even more noticeable. So I said it like 75%. You'll notice it's, it becomes really noticeable. Uh, but it's overall quite a nice effect. Um, uh, if you click the phase button, by the way, um, it switches to order. Uh, and this simply changes the order in which, or the sequence in which, the kind of movement occurs. So if I turn, if I do this, if I turn it so that you get to see, okay, if you, I don't know whether you can see it, um, there are four order options. So this is now kind of from the, from the center outwards. It just means that it looks a bit more random, okay, because the, fa the, the phase effect is being applied from this, from the middle, essentially from the middle bit, uh, of the, the two set, the two fixtures in the middle um, outwards. Um, just it, it, interesting effect, quite useful at times if you want to have a nice what looks like a consistent movement, but not perfectly in time. Because if I'm really honest, uh, a phase that, that, uh, that looks like this is a, is a bit um, is a bit dull. Uh, sorry, phase that looks like this is a bit dull uh, at zero percent because it means all your fixes are always pointing at the same. Um, uh, uh, it's good fun to play with order on its own, even with phase at zero percent, because you then create this kind of mirrored look. If you can see that, that's a nice way to create a mirrored look, um, but with all of your fixtures still um, moving perfectly in sync. Um, this is where this is where them kind of uh, uh, from the centre outwards. You can also have it from the from the centre inwards. Um, overall effect is very similar. I do quite like it though. It's a nice way to create a nice um, uh, consistent looking movement uh, across your moving moving heads. Uh, fade. Um, I'll quickly mention what that does. Um, if I if I go back to a nice known state, so go for so they're all doing the same thing. Uh, fade uh, is is almost like a how smooth the movement is. If you turn fade right down, you'll notice that the movement becomes more jerky. So um, so the, the 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 fixtures themselves are still describing that circular pattern, um, but it's not a nice kind of smooth smooth movement. 
um, it's a little bit more jerky. Uh, again, quite a nice effect, especially if you combine it with uh, changing the order. Uh, you can get some quite nice uh, uh, overall effects uh, by just by changing the order. Uh, uh, and if you change speed, for example, you can get some much more rapid movement. Um, so you've got you've got a nice uh, either timed or sound active movement, uh, but nice and consistent. I use these quite a bit. They're quite nice movements. I generally play with this on the fly, by the way. Um, once you've got a bit confident in using this, you can actually use all of these movement features. You know, on the fly, you can change them uh, whilst you're at a gig. Uh, not for the faint-hearted initially, but if you're uh, once you get to that point, um, you're not going to break them. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is they suddenly start uh, moving around too quickly, and you just hit the speed, turn it down, and should be all good. Right. Uh, so, so that's um, that's uh, moving heads uh, for uh, limitations um, and uh, each of the uh, what each of the kind of you know the controls mean whether it's speed, phase, order. Um, oh, I haven't talked about fan actually. Um, fan fan um, isn't always an option on some movement types. Um, if you uh, if I go for something like the uh, pan left to right. Okay, so what's what's happening here? There is no tilt movement on pan. Uh, the uh, so uh, what what happens here is that the the fixtures literally will kind of pan from left to right. But fan allows you to adjust the the overall height of each of the fixtures. So if I if I turn fan to zero, you'll notice that my pocket spots are pointing straight up and the vortexes are almost um, horizontal. If I turn fan right up, you'll notice that they, uh, to 100%, they almost kind of do the opposite. So you can use, you can use fan to adjust the kind of, sp the, the vertical tilt spread of your fixes. Fan at 50% is usually um, uh, uh, in the even height. So if you're not sure about fan, set it at 50% to start with. Um, and you can't really go too far wrong from there. Uh, I think that's about it for moving heads. Um, any questions? Not seeing any questions in the uh, in the chat. Pretty cool. Okay, so that's moving heads. Uh, let's turn those guys off. Uh, and let's go, let's talk about the the third the third type of light that I've got in the background here, uh, which are these mini deckers, um, because these are interesting little beasts as well. Um, I'm going to. I'm just going to show you what uh, the fixture profile looks like for uh, for a mini decker. Um, so if I if I quickly hop over on my uh, computer here to the uh, light cloud, so I'm just going to show you what light cloud looks like. Um, uh, if you if you go for look at profiles. Uh, if you go and search, if you want to go and search, if, uh, if I search for the official uh, Mini Decker uh, profile, let's see what's going to show up. So uh, here is the uh, uh, the official Mini Decker profile. Uh, seems to be oh uh, LZR. So if I show you what this one looks like, um, I'm going to open it up in the profile uh, profile editor. Uh, you can see this warning message is because it's an official profile and I can't edit it, not surprisingly. Um, so the problem we have here, um, straight away, is that the Mini Decker uh, does have a red, green, blue, white. Um, it has shutter dimming, it has motor function control, right? A little question mark there, uh, which means that that's not uh, the, the L1, the, the, the W1 will not know uh, what this channel means. It's got a little question mark, which means it's set up as an, a type of an other type of channel, um, but it won't know what it what it actually uh, what it actually means. If I could, if I quickly hop across to the Mini Decker manual, uh, you are going to have to read some of the, your user manuals. By the way, sorry to have to break that to you. Um, if I look at the user manual for the Mini Decker, um, you'll notice that uh, channel number seven is is called Motor Function Control. Uh, and it has two ranges, 0 to 127, which is where you can select a specific motor position, or 128 to 255 is rotation. Um, uh, things like warlocks, uh, if I go and find my warlock manual, probably got one of those open somewhere, um, warlock 
um, is, a, is a slightly awkward fixture, but definitely something that you can use with the W1. Um, it has a nice pan channel, uh, which is which controls the, the 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 angle of the mirror, but channel number two is rotation. Uh, this has got a number of ranges, um, and I was I was talking to or chatting via Facebook with Jason. I think it was last night. Um, this is this one is quite annoying because uh, the range of ten to one hundred and twenty uh, is a is causes the, the the barrel to rotate clockwise uh, from fast to slow. Uh, the value of 121 to 134 is stopped, but if you sneak from 134 to 135, it will immediately spin, start spinning counterclockwise very fast. So it goes from 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 not spinning to spinning very fast. Um, I do wish uh, people like ADJ would uh, would invert this so that it was it would spin counterclockwise from slow up to fast again um, it just means that the warlock is a little bit more tricky to control what i tend to do with mine is just use one of the, ro the rotation directions and i will show you how so going back to the the profile builder uh, for the mini decker um, i can see immediately that that because this is an unknown channel type uh, it's uh, the, the standard profile for a mini decker and the standard profile for things like um, uh, I think the warlock might be better actually um, wizards as well um, I think is also causing people some grief Nick uh, one of my good buddies uh, was uh, is struggling with some um, no, it wasn't Nick someone else uh, struggling with uh, wizards rush wizards um, because the the profile for those uh, doesn't have a defined um, pan or tilt channel. Uh, so, um, how do you get around that? Well, you either speak to the guys at, at uh, Wolf Mix nicely, or uh, you can do what I've done, which is uh, to create a profile myself. So, if I go back to uh, my own profiles, so I'm going to select mine, my own Mini Decker profile, and uh, select Mini. Oh dear, if I could spell it correctly, that'd be even better. Um, so I should have my own profile from Mini Decker. This is mine. So if I go and open this guy up, hopefully that's what you're seeing. Um, you'll notice that uh, mine is slightly different because for channel number eight, I've used pan, which means that the move effects will uh, will will actually allow me to control uh, the little Mini Deckers. Uh, that's the only difference, I think. That's the only key key difference. Um, so. Having got a profile that uses pan and tilt, um, we, we're then halfway to being able to actually uh, make these guys work. So the, if, if you've got moving heads or fixtures that you want to use move effects on, but they're not moving, it's almost certainly because the profile does not contain a pan or tilt because movement effects are just caused by or created by changing the pan and the tilt channels. If there isn't a pan or if there isn't a tilt channel, it's not going to move. So it doesn't matter whether you call it rotation, if it's called mirror rotation, if it's called barrel roll, all of those things. Uh, if it's called, if it's not pan or a tilt channel, your fixture will not move. So on uh, on here, I'm going to have a quick look. Uh, I'm going to go into settings. I've got two mini deckers set up. You'll see these guys at the back. If I look at this, the, the limitations for these, this looks proper crazy, right? Because I've literally got a line uh, where the, the min pan is zero, max pan is 50%, and the min tilt and max tilt is zero. Um, mini deckers don't have a tilt channel. Um, and this might, I, I need to, I, I may need to, oh crikey, I just realized that this is blinding you again. Let's go back to the home screen, turn the dimmers on these guys down. Sorry, I didn't mean to blind you with those. Right, select the team in brackets. Go to limitations. Um, I may need to, to check in with um, our good friend Siren at Wolfmix for this because I've noticed that uh, I can drag this around on along this line. You may notice that my moving heads are moving, but the mini deckers are not. That's all a bit curious. Um, I can even change the size of a max tilt so that obviously they don't have a tilt, so I wouldn't expect them to, to do anything. But I would expect them to, to rotate left and right. 
Um, what I would expect in this case is the, mir the mirror to, to go for its maximum rotation left and maximum rotation right. Um, uh, so it's, uh, how does this work with things like warlocks? Well, uh, if, you, if you remember the, the user manual, in fact, let's go back to it. If I, if I go back to the user manual for something like a warlock, uh, you probably want pan to, to, to span the whole of the screen from left to right because you want the, the mirror to be able to, to pan from left to right. But channel number two, which is rotation, uh, you will almost certainly want to limit to a very small section of, uh, of just one of the rotations here. So if clockwise from fast to slow um, is 10 to 120, I'm going to guess that you probably want to, you want, you want the limitation to be somewhere in the region of like 100 to 120. Now, if I look at this in terms of limitations on the screen, you'll notice that it doesn't say 100 to 120, it's in percentages. And I have asked Simon nicely if he could put the numbers on the screen as well. Because when you want to use limitations for things like fixtures like a warlock, um, you really want to know that you're setting it about uh, about right. Okay, you want to know that you set it to a value between 100 and 120. Because if it strays a bit beyond that, the thing can go. Your warlocks can go crazy. So for something like a a warlock, you're probably going to want to set. Um, um, I can't. I don't know what the actual numbers are, but it's probably going to be uh, like the minimum tilt. It's probably going to be. It's going to. I'm going to guess. I mean, you could you could do the maths and work out what 120 out of 200. Or, you know, 255 is. So with a calculator, but my my warlock limitations look something like this, with a very wide but very narrow. So so the thing that my warlocks can pan as far left and as far right as I wish, but the but the tilt which controls the rotation speed is severely limited, so that it only rolls uh, uh, slowly um, and then fast again, and then slowly and then fast, um, and the, and therefore the overall effect in the room is much more controlled. Um, if you've ever let warlocks loose, um, you'll know, um, and rush wizards for that matter, you'll know that if the barrel spins really quickly, the, the light gets flung around the room at a phenomenal speed. Um, um, and if I'm really honest, it starts to make me feel a bit sick. So I tend to make sure that the, the limitations are very, very strict, uh, so that the, uh, it, the, it can literally only go from slow to a little bit faster, not much. Uh, okay, quick check on the questions. Um, Axel says he's had the same discussion with Wolfmix about real numbers and not percentage values. Good. Um, the more, the better, because I would like to see uh, those numbers as well. Um, it is only a case of using a calculator. Um, so if you take 100, and 100, for example, and divide it by 255, uh, I don't know, my math is getting a bit dodgy on the fly here. But anyway, you can work out what 100 out of 255 is. But um, it would be uh, it would be a little bit easier if the numbers were on the screen. I'm glad Axel's asked as well. Good. Um, so uh, going back to my, uh, this is a mini decker, I just realised. So, um, so for the mini decker, I'm going to show you what this does in real life then. So if I set my max pan to 50%, 50 percent. Um, why am I setting max pan to 50? Um, I will uh, minimum tilt. I'm going to just drag this down. I'm going to drag it all the way down. Um, why am I setting it to 50 percent? Because if I go back to uh, my mini decker manual, uh, I'll show you what on the screen. It, uh, it says uh, for uh, individual motor uh, motor function, sorry, select motor position, 0 to 127. I'm just sad enough to know that 127 is exactly 50%. Um, so 0 to 127 is 50%. And then, uh, so that means the from, from 0 to 127, 0 being 0% and 127 being 50%. So I, I know that uh, if, I, if I set the limitation to those numbers, then my mini decker should work with movement effects. And uh, let's try it. So I'm going to go and... Um, the only thing that I'm slightly curious about, and I, and I will ask Simon this, is why when I when I do this, why it doesn't move. Kind of would expect it to do that, but anyway, don't know. Let's try. So if I go go out to my home screen, so my so my mini deckers are on in group D. So if I apply movement effects to those, 
uh, they start moving uh, uh, and uh, what's happening now is the is the pan channel is is moving uh, let's, go, let's go and check the overall size we had size at 100% um, and the uh, so it's the pan is now causing the mirror to rotate if I uh, if I want it to move a bit faster I can adjust the speed you'll see that they'll they'll start to move a bit more quickly um, the mirror interesting little observation here um, the mirror in these mini deckers is quite slow um, if you turn the speed up too high on these movement effects uh, it doesn't work I'll show you what happens if I turn it up to this you get this really weird jittery movement uh, that's because the W1 is sending way more DMX commands to these mini deckers than they can cope with. They simply cannot move the mirrors that quickly. So if I turn it down, you'll see eventually they go. They get to a point where you go right. I, I can now cope, and it's somewhere in around about the kind of 60% mark. They can. The mirrors can now cope with with that speed. Um, if once you go over about speed of 60% on these movement effects. Uh, uh, the mini deckers can't cope, and this it would probably be similar with moving heads as well. Uh, they those moving heads would simply not be able to move fast enough. The W1 can send DMX move commands to to them faster than they can actually move. So uh, uh, the beauty about these uh, these movements is uh, you can also switch them to be sound active now because the the, the mirror inside those mini deckers is genuinely being controlled uh, by pan. So therefore, if I if I click the button to change it to sound active, it, they should now they should now respond vis visibly to sound active, and I can see they are. If I just I don't want to dap bang this too hard, otherwise I end up shaking the screen. But yeah, they are. So they they do respond uh, well to kind of sound active as well. So uh, that means the, the the mirror movements inside those mini deckers uh, uh, responds to sound quick drink right um, uh, how are we doing any other questions uh, no uh, with Calculi you'll not get the expected values ah okay <laughs> um, okay that was odd you should but well right um, so uh, Apologies, I don't actually have any warlocks here, but um, or wizards for that matter. Um, but that's how you that's you, you need to do two things. First off, make sure the fixture profile uses pan and tilt. If it doesn't, you're kind of into live edit territory uh, to be able to set the the barrel rotation speed. Um, uh, but I would I prefer to use fixtures that actually um, the uh, profiles that do what I want them to do. Um, and I'm pretty sure people like. Um, Alistair, who was in the chat earlier, uh, has actually uh, got things like, I'm sure it was the Warlocks or the Rush Wizards uh, profiles um, corrected so that they use uh, uh, so that they use the uh, pan and tilt ch channels correctly. Okay. Um, that's probably about it for moving heads um, and, and barrels. Um, I can't think of anything else. Uh, let's have a quick. Uh, let's, uh, I'm just going to go. Hang on a second. Just turn some of these things off. So, right, go back. So, uh, unless anyone's got any questions about, <laughs> don't worry, I'm still here. Good, that's right then. Um, uh, unless anyone's got any questions about moving heads, um, I'll move on. Um, I hope that bit was useful. Uh, it should answer all of the really challenging questions that some people have, which is why, why when I've got two different types of fixtures, do they just not do the same thing? Um, it's, it really is about limitations. It's about making sure that the overall travel for each fixture is set correctly, um, and the limitations are set for each fixture correctly, so that when you bring them all together, um, they all point in the same direction. Um, there's, uh, there's various other things that, that uh, that you can do afterwards, but getting those limitations right is absolutely key um, to having all of your fixtures on the dance floor and moving in sync. Um, if you find they're not moving in sync, almost certainly haven't got the limitations set correctly. Right. Okay. 
Right, now we'll go on a bit of a voyage of discovery because we'll fire up some freedom sticks. Uh, for that, I am, I'm going to load up a separate project because I don't want these moving heads to keep blinding me every time I every time I uh, do something. Right, go to projects. I've, let me go and open up my freedom stick demo project. Right, so this should switch up all these moving heads and my freedom sticks should spring into life. Whoa. Okay, uh, there you go. So, I might just angle this camera up very slightly so you can see a bit more. Da -da -da. Right. Okay. Um, what have I got going on uh, here? Um, let's go and have a look. Um, so, uh, I've got eight freedom sticks. Uh, they're all set in 50 channel mode, which means that each LED is individually uh, addressable and controllable. So the W1 can, can essentially switch each LED in each stick on or off and set the colour. Um, freedom sticks, by their very nature, don't have any DMX in cable ports. So you have to be able to broadcast... Uh, Chauvet's wireless DMX protocol to them. Uh, that protocol is called DeFi. It sits entirely outside of the kind of the realms of the W1. The W1 doesn't uh, doesn't care what happens to the DMX signal once it goes out the back. Um, uh, it's it's your responsibility and my responsibility to get a DMX signal to the freedom sticks. Um, it would be the same if you had um, something like I don't know ADJ's. Uh, Wi-Fi, I use those quite a lot as well. Um, uh, if you use, you can use things like, um, oh, the, 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 the um, Donna plug-in dongles. Uh, um, how you, how do you get a, a wireless DMX signal to Freedom Sticks? Well, you've got loads of choices. Um, it's a little bit outside of the the, the kind of remit of this video, um, but you need something that will transmit DeFi to them. That could be um, the Shove DeFi Hub. Uh, it could be um, another freedom fixture, like a freedom par, for example. Um, freedom pars. Most people look at, at, at those as a as a as a par can that you can control wirelessly. But it has a DeFi transmitter in it as well. It's not just a receiver. It has a transmitter, so you can plug a a a y, a, D, a DMX cable into something like a freedom par and have it broadcast DeFi out to your freedom sticks. So that's another option. Um, the, uh, the, the new um, uh, DeFi XLR uh, transmitters, um, the little kind of pack with the plug-in uh, dongles, um, also really good, uh, excuse me. And um, the fourth option is the one that I'm using. You can't see it, but behind me, um, I've got a, a little Gobo Zoom. You can probably, see, you can't even see it on the wall. Um, there's, a, there's a Gobo uh, Zoom being projected on the wall, that particular fixture has the uh, Chauvet DeFi USB port in the back. So um, that's how I'm that's how I'm controlling these freedom sticks. Um, I'm using a DeFi uh, USB uh, adapter in the back of a fixture, and just, it's just broadcasting uh, DeFi DMX to this freedom sticks. So completely outside of the um, of the realms of the uh, w1 as i said w1 doesn't really care how you how you get dmx into your fixtures um it assumes you're going to take a, a, a dmx cable out but what happens after that um is up to you so uh if you've got any questions about how do you actually send a d5 signal to a, a freedom stick um ask away in the group um there'll be loads of people there can uh, that can help you and answer that um but uh, this it's it's not it's not a it's not a f kind of a feature of the w1 um as i said it doesn't really care how you how you get DMX signals to your lighting fixtures? Um, loads of options. So uh, they're running in 50. I've got eight of them. They're running in 50 channel mode. So they're literally addressed as like uh, this is address number one. Um, oh, you can't see this because I just realised. So I'll see if I can point. Um, so this is like address one, 51, 101, 151, 201, 251, blah blah blah. Um, uh, and uh, uh, and then it really is a case of experimenting with the effect to, to get something useful out of them. So here we go, let's see what we can do. Um, 
at the moment I've got uh, Freedom Sticks' group in my group A. I've got no color effects running and no beam effects. If you remember that little diagram that I showed you last time that shows you the stack, uh, that means that with no color effects and no beam effects, they should be just sh uh, showing the color that's selected on the color button. So this is some kind of, I don't even know what color that's supposed to be. It's supposed to be kind of a magenta, it isn't really. Um, so if I select amber, there will go amber. Uh, this is a green, a kind of a cyan color. That's a darker pink, and if I click to go 6 to 10, right, they can go be red, yellow, darker green, blue, white. So those are the individual colours um, uh, that you can select. So you can, if you want to have all of your freedom sticks, all the same colour, you, uh, you can just select the individual colour here. But that's quite dull. So um, this is where we can start to look at colour effects. So if I go to the colour effects, now I've selected here... Um, uh, uh, I'm just going to talk through what I've got running. Um, so I've selected the rainbow effect. This isn't active yet, so the sticks are going to carry on being white until I activate the, the colour effects. I've selected the kind of rainbow fade. Speed is at 50%. Phase is uh, kind of 20, well, 20% 20 um, and fade. I'm just going to hit this and see what happens. Right. So what's going on here is uh, that the freedom sticks are changing colour between blue you, it's, I'll, I'll have to explain what's going on because I don't think you can see it quite clearly on the screen. Uh, they're fading between blue and pink with a slight phase. If I turn the phase off, you'll see they should go phase all blue and then all pink. If I turn phase to 50%, I'm going to guess that half of them will be blue and half of them will be pink. So you can see that um, oh, that's interesting. Um, I've just noticed that the order is going from what looks like the centre outwards. Yeah, it is. Look at that. If I click the order button, it's going from the centre outwards. If I switch it uh, to be left to right, you can you'll you'll see now that the pattern is kind of is wiping from from left to right. I can change it to be right to left. Uh, uh, you can play around with the order, so you can you can see that effect is is moving outwards. Uh, and uh, and then if I go for number four, that's the kind of effect, the, the color wash wipe effect moving inwards. Um, uh, fade, um, uh, it's, it, it really is best to just have a play around with these and see what effects you can create. Um, fade uh, determines whether the, whether the individual LEDs fade on and off again. So if I turn the fade down to zero, you'll notice that they sort of ping on rather than uh, and 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 uh, and, uh, and and switch colour immediately. They don't fade from pink to blue. They they literally snap change. Um, if I turn the speed down on this, you'll see what's really happening because speed at fifty percent um, can be a bit deceiving. If I turn the speed down, hopefully you can actually see what's happening now. So I've got the speed down at twenty percent, and you can see that that the colour effect is moving from the center outwards uh, and you can you can see that there uh, each LED is changing. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you will will think why why is it why is it why is the left and the right image uh, not the same? Why is it, you, if I if I just point my camera angle up a bit it's hard to see the whole stick. Um, uh, you may be wondering why why the uh, this stick here, for example, if I point to this this stick here, uh, appears to st the effect appears to start at the top and go downwards, whereas the stick here, the effect starts at the bottom and goes up. And if you stop and think about it for a moment, you'll realise that that's completely logical because these freedom sticks are addressed from from bottom to top, okay? So the LED at the bottom is, is the kind of LED number one and the top one is 16. So if you imagine an effect, um, if these were all laid out end to end, it would make a bit more sense. But, uh, but the reality is that uh, this is not the W1 getting it wrong. It's simply, it simply starting the effect from the center um, and treating the top, the top of this stick and the bottom of this stick as being adjacent LEDs. Um, uh, it's uh, I've 
I've, I've had a couple of people ask me why does it why is the effect not symmetrical um, and it's because of the way that freedom sticks are addressed you kind of really, really want to turn some of them upside down um, but that's not e in fact not easy you can't do that um, loads of right, I've got a quick question from Al are the freedom sticks set to one DMX value uh, no uh, so these all of my freedom sticks are uh, addressed individually. So the, as I, I think I mentioned uh, just a moment ago, uh, the stick on the left is DM, DMX address one. They're set in 50 channel mode. So the second stick, so this guy is, is, a, is um, uh, if you can see, don't know whether you can. Uh, I've just moved it out of camera shot. That was a bit stupid, wasn't it? Um, so this, the, so the stick on the left is um, is address uh, freedom is address number one. That's fifty one, one hundred and one, hundred and fifty one, two hundred and one, two five one. Uh, yeah, all the way up to uh, three uh, address three five one. So yeah, so these eight sticks are using four hundred DMX channels um, because that's how sh uh, freedom sticks work um, in fifty channel mode. So eight sticks, four hundred DMX addresses um, are being used here just just for this show. Uh, yeah, not for the faint-hearted. Right. Okay. Um, uh, any other questions so far? Um, I have those. I uh, just need to know how they talk to the Freedom Six. Um, one of, in the DeFi XLR pack, uh, one of those little XLRs is a transmitter. Uh, so your best bet is to do uh, essentially what you what you should do. Um, don't plug. A DeFi XLR straight into the back of your um, W1. It might be quite tempting to do that, um, but actually, it's generally a good idea to put like a 50 centimeter or a 75 centimeter cable in between um, your W1 and the XLR DeFi XLR transmitter. Uh, that way, um, it just avoids any kind of. I know there isn't any kind of Wi-Fi or radio interference, but get get your transmitter away from any other kind of electrical devices if you can. Um, generally a, a sensible thing to do. You could plug it straight in, but I'd recommend you put a short cable in between. So uh, that that way, your uh, the the DeFi XLR transmitter will then send DMX straight to your Freedom Sticks. Um, you don't have to buy the DeFi XLR pack. I think you can buy the transmitter on its own. Um, although the pack is really useful because if you've got moving heads, uh, you can put the receivers in the back as well. They don't have to be show rare. You can put those DeFi XLR receivers into into any fixture um, and make them uh, wireless DNX, which is really cool. Right. Um, so let's have a play around with these patterns. So uh, color effects. Uh, uh, I'm using this is the fade. Um, if I introduce a third color, like um, I don't know, let's go, oh, let's go for something really obvious like green, um, you'll see that stars. <laughs> Starts to look a bit like a fairground, <laughs> if I'm honest. Um, it's not so bad if you put fade on there. Uh, you can get uh, you can get some rather nice kind of colours. Um, uh, if if you turn fade off, it, it's a very harsh change, and you can see you can literally see each LED changing. Whereas if you put some fade on there, it fades between colours, um, and generally looks um, a bit nicer. It's a, a bit less harsh, um, but. Uh, what you what you're going to need to do is 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 look at what you know what um, what colours you want to use, uh, and for for different for different scenes really. Um, first dance, I kind of struggle with really because I'm thinking I probably want um, a, uh, a a white uh, and something else. Um, and you can uh, th this is I'm going to I'm going to delve into beam effects in a moment because that's that's this is probably this is one occasion where it becomes really obvious what what beam effects uh, does, uh, but um, if you if you wanted to uh, flip between a kind of a, a white and a very light cyan color, uh, and switch to something like uh, the sparkle, um, that speeds probably a bit far. So if I turn it down, um, so I'm now using the sparkle effect here, uh, and turn the speed right down. Um, you can see now that I've got. It's quite hard to see on the camera, but it's fading between white and uh, light blue. If I turn the if I turn the light blue off, it will just sparkle white on its own. If you put if you add another color very similar to white, 
you'll get um, you could go you could go uh, pink for example and then you end up with a nice kind of white and what looks a bit like a warm white um, in real life it's got a very faint pink hue to it um, uh, uh, You'll need the speed to be quite low, but you can create some quite nice effects with this. If you if you crank up size, um, that just has a bit of an effect on on the actual um, LEDs that are lit. Um, just it just changes the overall kind of groupings of of uh, of the of the lit LEDs. If you turn it down to 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 near or to zero, you see you'll see the effect is very different as if I were to crank it right up to 100%. 100% means that basically they all come on. All at once, and then they all fade off. Whereas if I crank size down um, to something like I don't know, we are we're like thirty percent now. You'll see that some some of the LEDs are on uh, quite bright. Some of them are, are, uh, are dim. Um, you can play around with order for this. You can play around with phase as well to create some slightly different effects. Um, but overall, you can you can create some quite subtle. I'm sure we all know, anybody who's DJed a wedding will know that um, first dance uh, lighting needs to be very subtle um, uh, because uh, most of the time a photographer will not forgive you if you've got lights uh, everywhere um, and rapidly changing colours. So yeah, something as subtle as this um, is quite useful. Um, uh, the other, if, if you look at some of these other effects, these are a bit more uh, rapid. So this is this is literally... Uh, wiping two colours from left to right. Uh, uh, the the kind of Saturday Night Fever. I'm not quite sure how this translates. I've never quite worked this out in my head, but this seems to uh, to alternate the colours that I've selected. So if I if I choose uh, two very or two or three very different colours, if I go red, green, and blue, for example, you'll see. Um, uh, oh, I've got white in there as well. Um, You'll see that this kind of alternates between these three. You can adjust the speed um, to uh, so that it's a bit faster. Um, but you can create some interesting, interesting color patterns with this. But when it get where it gets really interesting is where when you overlay beam effects. Um, so for the purposes of a quick demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to just stick these on white. Um, I'm essentially on permanently in fact what i'm going to do is even turn off color effects for the for this so so if i so if i go back to my home screen look at color i've got it i've got it just set to white so there's no, there's literally nothing doing there's no there's no color effects being applied to this um, this is where you can have a play around with beam effects because you here what beam effects does is is not choose the color of the pixel but chooses whether it's uh, the, sorry, um, yeah, the LED pixel. It's um, it, the beam effects uh, chooses whether or not the, the the LED is lit or not, and whether it's whether it essentially whether it fades or not. So, with with uh, with my freedom sticks basically on a static white, if I choose this kind of sine wave beam effects and switch it on, you'll see that I've created a very similar uh, scene. But instead of using, but not using color effects, by, but you, by using beam effects. So my color is set permanently to white. If I turn turn off uh, beam effects, you'll see my color is permanently white. The beam effects is simply switching them on and off. It's become a bit more apparent if you look at the sparkle. You'll see that the the sparkle does the same thing. So uh, so the, these what, what's what's happening here is the sticks are on essentially on permanently, except. Beam effects is saying actually you need to turn some of them on and off. Um, if I put the the little um, heartbeat is quite interesting. That is way too fast. If I turn it down, um, you'll you'll see that some effects are better fast, some effects are better slow. Um, uh, this is this is designed to simulate a kind of a heartbeat, um, albeit a bit slowly. So as in ding 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 ding, that's the uh, that's the the overall effect. Um, this trying to create here. Um, uh, on the beam effects, there's three, there's three kind of custom, like sequenced effects that you can choose, and these are also a bit interesting because you have some control over these. So this one here, for example, I've set up my uh, beam effects uh, sequencer to um, to switch between uh, 
it, it, it automatically groups uh, fixtures into into four. Is it four groups? I'm stopping and thinking about that now. Um, I think it's four groups. Um, so you and you uh, you can uh, and you can control the sequence in which these uh, each uh, fixture group is lit. If I go to the second sequence, so you'll see that I've set this one to be uh, just the two outside and then the two inside. Um, so again, remember, beam effects here is working on the basis that these lights are permanently on. That each LED is permanently on, except beam effects turns them on or off. It does not determine the color. Color effects does that. So, having had a quick look at what these things do, you can now you can now say, um, so. What happens if you combine the two? What happens if you if you get a color effect that's doing something like uh, uh, changing color between uh, let's go for red, green, and blue? Um, and I'm going to uh, apply color effects to these guys. Okay, so I've now got I've still got white on. So I've got uh, let's go for uh, I've got a, a a rainbow fade across these sticks. You want I'm going to speed it up it's a bit slow. Might go for something like fifty percent. So a rainbow, a rainbow fade from the centre outwards. I'm also going to switch on a beam effects uh, for a sparkle. Hopefully, uh, switch it on for these guys. So now I've got a combination of two things happening. Um, the rainbow, if, and it's probably best to sh if I switch switch beam effects off. So you'll see that the colour the colour wash is moving from the centre outwards. When I apply a beam effect to it as well, it also then switches the LEDs on and off according to the sparkle pattern. So you end up with a slightly more subtle um, effect, which I think is a bit nicer. Um, you're definitely going to have to get your freedom sticks out. Do not try and set this up at a gig, um, because uh, I can tell you, you'll probably spend several hours looking for combinations that fit uh, the scenes that you're that you want to create. Um, there are some uh, that I still haven't yet worked out. Um, I would, I, uh, I happen to love these freedom sticks. Um, program 18 on them is a really subtle white sparkle where very few of the LEDs light up. Um, it's not particularly random. That's the only downside. And, and all of the sticks do the same thing. Um, but uh, when they're set to kind of, you know, um, master slave. But it's a but program eighteen is a really subtle white sparkle. Um, I'm I've not yet managed to recreate that. It that's I it that's starting to feel quite tricky, quite hard to do. But uh, you can very definitely create some subtle effects with this that you can absolutely uh, use out at gigs. And if you want them to just be mad, you can do that as well. So if you if you want uh, your freedom sticks to just be all one color or, or, or constantly changing color as if they were just like par cans for example you can absolutely do that and you can also use uh, the beam effects so if I go back to my uh, color effects at the moment so I've got these set to red green and blue um, I think I've probably got my if I turn uh, the phase right down to zero so that they are changing between those three colors but the but the whole each stick is will always be the same color, so they're all they're all red or all green or all blue. Um, you can see that you can create some nice uh, multicolored sparkles, but it doesn't look like some sort of fairground, right? Um, I can't help feeling that it's all too easy to create some sort of carousel fairground ride uh, ride with these um, if you've got um, if you've got too many colors and uh, LEDs changing um, on and off. Right, quick look at some questions. Um, right, also ensure that the same RC channel. Yes, absolutely. Good point, um, Alistair. Uh, uh, all Freedom fixtures uh, can run on um, one of 15 different channels. So it's really important that if you've got your Freedom st stick set up to, to receive on um, DeFi channel 15, the transmitter has to be set up on DeFi channel 15 as well. Otherwise, uh, you've got one person shouting and no one listening. Um, all the other way around. Uh, yes, they work great with my other fixtures. Just trying to get my head around how they can talk to the freedom sticks. Uh, yeah. Uh, so in terms of using the DeFi transmitters, yeah, that's just the, the DeFi transmitters are just a means to an end. All it's doing is getting a DMX signal to the sticks. Um, sticks are just uh, are the um, they're a slightly awkward fixture in the fact that they, as I said, they have no they've got no DMX input other than via 
DeFi. Um, so you just need something that will transmit DeFi to them. And it really doesn't matter what it is. Uh, loads of options there. Uh, so um, I, I kind of think that's about it in terms of freedom sticks. Um, re it, it really is just like, in my case here, I've got eight sticks, each of them with uh, 16 individual LEDs. So I've got the best part of four, what is essentially 400 mini par cans that I'm playing with. Um, and that's that's really as complicated as it gets. Uh, 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 you may find that they, they, they sometimes do some odd things, but it's you have to remember that each stick is addressed from the from the bottom to the top so uh, it's it can be quite hard to create some perfectly symmetrical effects um, because uh, because of the way that they are uh, addressed and the way that the sticks themselves work but um, but not impossible to create some really uh, some really lovely effects um, you just have to mix and match both color and beam uh, to, to kind of create the effect you're looking for so if you go in them uh, if you go and have a look at uh, a mix and match something like the heartbeat, for example, um, with the fades, um, you can see you can you kind of get that kind of dual pulse. You can't see my hands moving. Um, that kind of dual pulse of a, of a kind of a, a typical heartbeat, uh, uh, and they can do some nice things. Uh, they probably look and feel a bit slow here, but that's because I kind of deliberately slowed them down so that you uh, can see them. If you crank the speed up, you can really get them to kind of flash wildly so I mean I've got speed at like 80% there um, uh, you're going to start to get you're going to start to get into trouble with some people who've got anything photosensitive you might have to be a bit careful there but um, but yeah that's uh, 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 there is absolutely no substitute for for doing what I've done here uh, which is to uh, um, annoy your better half by getting lights out and sticking them in your spare room and just lighting up the house uh, for several hours um, so that you can um, uh, you can get to grips with scenes that you like and then save them as presets because once you've found something you like um, uh, you can save them as presets and definitely do go and investigate uh, these um, these step sequences because they're, they're they are really quite uh, cool if you have a look at the way that some of these things work you can uh, you, for example you, you'll see for example that there's there's eight steps in the step sequencer and you determine which uh, which um, fixtures light um, in each step, quite complicated to explain. I wasn't, I wasn't really planning on doing it, going over it here. Um, but you can have some great fun with this beam effect step sequencer um, to create some very custom effects. Um, it works well for this. It, that step sequencer also works really well um, for moving heads as well. So if we go back uh, to the moving, if I were to go back to the moving heads I've got on the floor, um, you'll, re you'll remember from earlier on that I all the beams are on all of the time. Um, but if I'm using beam effects here. Um, then that would apply to these moving heads um, as well. So therefore you would see uh, uh, both the sticks and the heads all part of that same kind of beam effect overall. Um, remember uh, that there is only one colour effect um, active at any one time across uh, any groups that have it active. There's only one beam effect active at any one time. Um, you can't have two different beam effects on two different groups of fixtures. Um, uh, bless it. This W1 is clever, but it's not that clever um, that you can have multiple beam effects. Um, okay. Anybody got any questions about um, about freedom sticks then? Because that 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 really does cover the the, the basics of uh, of of how to get them set up and and working, um, and and then what uh, uh, and really I say you need to just you really need to just again have a play. And find some scenes that you like that you think will work. Um, uh, particularly uh, paying attention to things like speed. Um, uh, all of these things do different. Uh, uh, all of these different uh, controls of these um, encoders um, have a can have a very dramatic overall effect on how these things work. So as you can see, if I turn fade right down on this beam effect, you kind of create a, a very different uh, overall effect because the lights each LED is now pinging on and off. So there's le there's there's an enormous amount of control here. Um, uh, you can get some really can, some really wacky effects uh, going. Um, some things, um, if you think that you can recreate the effects that, of the built-in macros from the Freedom Sticks, you're probably going to be uh, disappointed because um, what's built into the Freedom Sticks is pretty, there's some pretty complex programming going on there. Um, but that said, there are 
plenty of things that you can do with the W1 that the that the sticks themselves can't do. Um, it's not it's not it's not going to come close to individual pixel mapping, but that's a whole different ball game. Um, uh, and uh, you'll need some pretty specialist software to do that. Um, but uh, I've certainly had a fair bit of fun uh, earlier on today having a play around with color effects and beam effects and um, with some subtle changes you can create some really incredible uh, effects that you can save as presets that you can use. Um, so, uh, final word for me then is that um, as part of this demo, um, I, I separated, uh, you'll remember I had two distinct projects, uh, one for the moving heads and limitations and I loaded a completely independent project um, for the freedom sticks. Uh, uh, for my normal gig setup I usually have par cans in there as well, um, usually um, some kind of pin spot on my mirror ball, so all of my fixtures and please remember that things like colour effects, movement effects and beam effects acries, a, applies across the board for all of them. So for the kind of purposes of this demo um, I wanted to separate each of these fixtures out so that you could see specifically what's going on with those fixtures but when you bring them all together uh, as I said don't forget that things like beam effects will apply to all of them and that's one of the reasons why I have uh, a number of groups if I can so if I just go and load up uh, my normal kind of full setup project here on the um, the W1 so go back to uh, da, da, da. if I go back to load up my the, the, oh, blimey I'm being blinded now by these flipping things. Uh, let me turn these dimmer down because it's way too bright. Um, uh, that's why I've 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 separated all of my fixtures into very distinct groups. So I've got pars, moving spots. Um, such as the inner pocket spots, moving wash, which is these um, Equinox uh, Vortex, um, anything with a barrel or a rotating mirror in it, I've, I've separated those out into a separate group. Uh, pin spots, um, I, so I've got two fixtures. One, one of them is the is the Gobo pin spot that is used to to project DeFi uh, or transmit DeFi to my sticks, um, and then I've got Freedom sticks in a separate. Um, in a separate group um, and in fact in this particular case the freedom sticks are even in, on, on universe 2 um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier mine I've got mine set in 50 channel mode so with 8 of them that's 400 DMX addresses um, so I've set those up on universe 2 works perfectly right? the W1 is quite capable of, of running effects across two universes so uh, that's not going to be an issue um, uh, the reason I've got so many groups is simply so that I can deter I can decide whether I have colour effects or movement or beam applied to each of those groups. Um, if I'd lumped all of my fixtures into, let's say I'd lumped both all of my moving spots and moving wash into a single group, um, that would mean that I beam effects would, would either be on or off or colour effects would be on or off for all of them. Whereas if you split them out into multiple groups, you'll get um, a little bit more control over, when, um, of, over these. So I tend to uh, for example, for first dances, I would have something like these moving wash, um, just kind of pointing at the ceiling and washing the ceiling rather than blinding guests and photographers. Um, uh, whereas with um, you may want your moving spots to be uh, having a very subtle movement on the, on actually down on the dance floor. Right. Um. Do your freedom sticks along with your other lights take over 512 channels? Yes, they do. That's why I use Universe 2. Um, so on my, if I go, if I show you my my setup here, um, if you can see, so I've got, um, if I, I'm better going to check. I've actually got them in here. Um, so I've got my quad star cloth, the Gobo Zoom USB, the Ninja Zoom is what I use to pin spot my mirror ball. So I've got 12 element hexes, some gesture spots, some Qbar Pros, loads of freedom sticks. So as you can see, these freedom sticks here are in Universe 2. So they're addressed from DMX address 1, um, uh, but in Universe 2. Uh, I think I've only got four in this setup at the moment, but I've put them in Universe 2. Um, Universe 2 gives you uh, a second batch of 500 addresses so uh yeah so i so def i would mind freedom six would definitely take me over over um 512 dmx addresses hence i put them in universe two um if you don't know how to do that again drop a question into the this group um it's dead easy to do um you just go and select the actual fixture um and then you use the encoder 
uh, to set the DMX address um, and then once you get to 512 for universe 1 it rolls over into universe 2 and back to address number 1 again so uh, dead easy to do right um, think I've been going for long enough uh, that's uh, that's about 1 hour and 25 minutes of me talking um, I hope that was uh, useful um, I hope you got uh, something out of that um, if you are struggling uh, always remember just drop messages into the uh, the Wolf Mix discussion group um, and there'll be somebody in there that has either done what you're trying to do or come across the issues uh, that you've been having um, and as, as I mentioned right at the beginning uh, profiles are really really important um, and as is reading the manuals uh, for your fixtures, there is no getting away from the fact that uh, you need. If you're going to set limitations to con to limit things like movement speeds on on warlocks, rush wizards, or anything like that, you need to look at the manual um, to see uh, what the values are. Um, you can't see those values on the screen of the W1, unfortunately. You've got to do it by percentages. Um, and I'm hoping that Alex and I will nudge Simon once more to see if he can put the uh, numbers on screen, uh, just to make our lives just that a little bit easier. Right. I'm going to uh, call it a day uh, there. I hope that was uh, I hope that was helpful. Hope it was useful. Uh, do drop some feedback into the um, uh, into the chat and into the uh, to the group. Um, um, and if there's something you want me to cover again in an, in a few weeks' time, uh, very happy to try and do that. Um, get some fixtures out. Um, you should see what's going on behind me. Absolute mess of cables around here. Um, uh, but hopefully it's all it's kind of done what I was hoping it would do today, which is cool. Right, that's it. I'm going to sign off. Uh, thanks very much for listening, watching, and uh, I will see you again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.